This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. For as little as $10 a month, you can help people find life-changing guidance. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa yanfa'na bima tu'allimuna. Wa zidna min fadlik ilman wa amlan wa qurban ya arhamar rahimin. Allahumma zidna wa la tanqusna wa akrimna wa la tuhinna wa a'atina wa la taharimna. Wa athirna wa la tu'thir alayna wa ardina wa arda'anna. Ya Arhamar Rahimi. Okay, Bismillah. So, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, we were looking at um, the rescue of Bani Israel. And what a moment that must have been for them. Um, like we talked about when we talked about Sayyidina uh, Nuh, alayhi salatu um, with these long term tests, these long term trials. Um, you know, it's it, it can be difficult. A person can lose sight of the end due to you know the length of it. And but when it actually came, you know, for Sayyidina Nuh, and you know, when it actually came here for Bani Israel, you know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala facilitated it for them in, in such a way that they were rescued. So they got away with the promise of their own land and you know their own uh, country that they would have. And at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, made them feel vindicated, right? That they saw the destruction of their tormentor. Right? They saw Fir'aun drown, they saw him die right there in front of him, right? in front of them all. And, you know, so in, in this, you know, is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who, you know, his treatment of his servants is always kind and always loving, right? And even within the you know within the rough days, there's you know there's there's there's, uh, there's good news and there's benefit for them, right? So uh, when Israel were given this opportunity, what happened then? They they crossed uh, they, they got out of the water, and Sidna Musa and obviously the natural instinct for all of them was to get through as quickly as they can. And as I said, because of the large number of people that were there with them, the elderly, the young, it wasn't possible for them to all be like sprinting, you know, running across. So they must have had a quick pace, but what they could manage. And clearly some people got to the other side first. And so when they all got out, there must have been this this desire to you know, hasten, to get away from there, you know, lest, you know, Fir'aun gets through with his forces. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave his uh, this command to Sayyidina uh, Musa, وَاتْرُكِ الْبَحْرَ رَهْوًا إِنَّهُمْ جُنْدٌ مُغْرَقُونَ And leave the sea parted, for they are certainly an army bound to drown. Right? So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commented, كَمْ تَرَكُوا مِنْ جَنَّاتٍ وَعْيُونَ In Surah Zukhruf. وَزُرُوعٍ وَمَقَامٍ كَرِيمٍ وَنَعْمَةٍ With the Fatah. With the Fatah here. كَانُوا فِيهَا فَاكِهِينَ كَذَلِكَ وَأَوْرَثْنَاهَا قَوْمًا آخرين. Imagine how many gardens and springs the tyrants left behind as well as the various crops and splendid residences and the luxuries with which they, were, which they fully enjoyed. So it was. And we awarded it all to another people. Right? So what happened? وَاتْرُكِ الْبَحْرَ رَهْوًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Sayyidina Musa So rahu, uh, the root word means to be still So as you know the water when it parted it, it, it was described as two mountains And it's there on both sides and it's perfectly still So leave the water still Meaning don't hit your staff again uh, to make it come back Because that was the means through which it happened Although the doer was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So leave the water and let it, you know, um, uh, leave it there as it is. Because there's, there's a purpose. Because Fir'aun and his people are going to come. إِنَّهُمْ جُنْدُمْ مُغْرَقُونَ That they are, they are, host, they are a host. That's in the host of a, um, 
a host meaning you know an army a large army who are drowned like uh, is translated as bound to be drowned but the word in Arabic is that they're already drowned you know they're drowned you know it's, it's certain to happen and that is what happened right and so Fir'aun and his army came and they went went inside uh, and the water collapsed we look at that let's just look at the rest of the ayah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kam taraku min jannatin wa ayun. How many, how, it's just, come, it's like here, you know, to express, you know, wonder, like how many gardens and springs and crops and beautiful places, right, they, they, you know, residences, just the areas, they left, they left behind them. Wa na'matan, wa na'matin, and luxuries, right. Kanu fiha fakihin, that they were enjoying, they were in these luxuries as though these luxuries and they're in them enjoying them completely right and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said uh, and no less than that you know that's how we did it and we bequeathed them to other people so what is he saying you, know, you just look at this you know they had so many many of these gifts but they chose to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The gifts came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ultimately what happened, they were taken away. And um, this is the thing, like with, with, with gratitude, you know, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the gifts that he's given us. You know, This is what keeps a, a, a blessing, right? فَقَدْ قَيَّدَهَا بِعِقَالِهَا so whoever shows gratitude for a blessing has tied it up. And if you have like a like a camel or a horse or something and you don't want them to go wandering off, then what you do, you tie the camel or the horse to a fence or a pillar or something and it stays where it is. So this is how, how, how blessings are in life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us all gifts. And you show appreciation, you feel thanks and you say thank you, alhamdulillah. You, you do all of this and what happens with those gifts they stay in your life right in fact not only do they stay they bring friends <laughs> you know um uh, said that if you're grateful i'll certainly give you more he increases the gifts and the blessings but you know someone that doesn't do this they don't show gratitude they take it for granted um and those it's like they don't tie up that camel or the horse and the horse or, you know, it wanders off right they leave these people so there's a very very practical lesson here for us right just having you know even a few moments in a day right <clears throat> although the more the better is where you feel you know sit and you feel appreciation and you tell Allah oh Allah thank you for this and thank you for that and thank you for your gifts and this is how they're preserved um so you know, so, so that's what, you know, they, they didn't do that. In fact, not only did they not show thanks, they did the exact opposite of, you know, the minimum thanks, Iman, like disbelief, right? <coughs> so they were destroyed. Um, okay. Let's look at another set of ayat. This is in uh, Surah Al-Dhariyat. Allah SWT said, وَفِي مُوسَىٰ إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَاهُ إِلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنَ بِسُلْطَانٍ مُبِينٍ And in Musa, so here this is translated as in the story of Moses was another lesson, right? So in uh, so Surah Al-Dhariyat has a theme and Allah points to the signs that are in certain things, right? And so uh, after discussing Sayyidina Ibrahim and we looked at those verses and how his, you know, the angels came to him as guests, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wafi Musa and in Musa himself and his story and everything connected to him was a tremendous sign, right? When Id Arsalnahu ila Fir'auna Bisultani Mubin, when we sent him to Fir'aun with a clear, decisive proof and authority, you know, because he had you know, they, they were undeniable, right? Fatawalla bi ruknihi. وَقَالَ سَاحِرٌ أَوْ مَجْنُونَ So Fir'aun, so how is it translated? It was translated as, uh, but Fir'aun uh, was carried away by, by his power, uh, uh, saying of Moses, a magician or a madman. Right, so what happened? فَأَخَذْنَاهُ وَجُنُودَهُ فَنَبَذْنَاهُمْ فِي الْيَمِّ وَهُوَ مُلِيمٌ Received him, seized him and his soldiers, casting them 
uh, into a sea while he was blameworthy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَتَوَلَّى بِرُكْنِهِ So Fir'aun turned away. So literally what it means, Tawalla means to do a 180. When you're facing, you now turn your back to it. Right? بِرُكْنِهِ With his Rukn. Rukn like, it can mean a corner, but it means it's used to express something uh, whose support is used. Now something of power uh, and, you know, is used as a support. You know, to, you know, to help one, right? For the one birukni, so he turned away from him. All of his followers, you know, the people that him this influence, and you know, the people that looked up to him, he turned away from all of the, uh, with all of them, from Musa, right? And the signs of Allah. وَقَالَ سَاحِرٌ أَوْ مَجْنُونٌ And he dismissed said the Musa. He said, "Is a magician or he's insane?" Right? Magician is using these powers, whatever, to to get power influence to get you know remove me from my throne or oh, he's insane so you know the arguments that he's making the things he's saying they're irrational right that's what he's saying so he wasn't he didn't care for akhad now who's Allah SWT summarizes is for akhad and the kha is I always find that really powerful for akhad now who so we took him and his armies right all these people he called on you know when they sent the people to go you know recruit or conscript or just get all these people from the other cities to you know swell his armies uh and we toss them in the sea right so the yum is actually interesting i think the yum is what the egyptians um that is it's, it's the word uh, the arabs used it they had appropriated the word but it's the word that they used uh, for for like you know the sea or a large body of water, right? Uh wa mulim was he's blameworthy and he's you know he's at fault and he's doing something that can be criticized. Whilst he's doing all that, he was tossed about and just he was just drowned, right? And so that's what happened with him. Um Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, Falamma asafu nan taqamna min minhum and when they enraged us, right? And the ulama have a discussion on this word. Uh, so like I said, Abdullah ibn Abbas, his narrator is saying that uh, Asif, Rabbana uh, Asif. He said, said this word, it means that um, it's anger directed towards someone who's beneath you. But uh, if it's, because yeah, it can also have a meaning of sadness, as I say in some contexts. And if it's uh, if someone does something to you and they're beneath you, and you have power over them, it manifests as anger. Otherwise, if they're above you and you can't do anything, it manifests as sadness, right? But he said, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So when they enraged us, right? When, when they caused um, so much harm to Bani Israel, and there are certain things, Wallahu yaghdabu yarda laka ahdi min al wara, as Imam al Tahawi said, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gets and he's pleased but not like anyone else of humanity so this is what we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like he doesn't have emotions like a human being um, but he said that you know when they enraged him and, uh, so that, I won't go into but the ulama have different ways of interpreting this just take it as it is you know uh, he said when they enraged him and they caused him to be angry he, he said we, we got we avenged you know we got vengeance from them we, you know, took revenge how by destroying them right now you have to see you know people you know people sometimes get concerned people sometimes think about you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you know if he's um so merciful then you know why are these people you know why isn't everyone forgiven in any situation um Allah is a king in fact he's the king of kings limanil mulkul yawm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on the day of judgment who does the dominion being belong belong to right today and it's clear, and he answers it, Lillah, it belongs to Allah, Al-Wahid, the one, right? Al-Qahar, the one who keeps dominating everyone else. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a king has to, you know, kings kings have, you know, Allah is perfect, right? And from the perfection of this um, divine, you know, divine, divine majesty is that there's mercy which he shows to everyone even though you know, Fir'aun, how, how many chances did he get how many years did he keep on living despite claiming to be a god 
So this is there, but at the same time, because if without mercy, there's just harshness, and you know, uh, and that's not Allah's way. Uh, Allah is perfect, and but then at the same time, if there isn't this majesty and power and might, then you know people, you know people. If you look at a king on on earth, if he has no um, or a ruler, if he has no mercy, then he just wrongs people because of his tyranny, right? And but if it's all mercy, then people kind of get away with anything. People go around committing crimes, and you know they're let off, right? So there's this majesty to him. So yes, he's merciful to everyone, but he's a king, and he has laws and rules. And so these laws, you know, and these people fighting Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and you know his prophets, and you know these, you know, people that were you know, poor and downtrodden. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, doesn't allow it, right? So it, they don't get away with it. Okay, it might allow, it might happen for everyone to be tested, you know, in their life situation, but they don't get away with it. So he said, فَلَمَّا أَصَفُونَ تَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ You know, when the anger does, we got vengeance, right? We got revenge. فَأَغْرَقْنَا so Even the غَيْنْ with the you hold the ghain for oh, it's like you know the water's coming up, drowning up. For ajma'in, and we drowned all of them. Fajalnahum salafan wa mathalan lil akhirin. And we made them an example and a lesson for the you know lil uh, akhirin for those after them. So it's like you know, you know someone tells you, and, and this is it, you know, this is like as I said. Aside when it the intelligent or the felicitous person is who he who takes a lesson, you know, through other people. What have others gone through, what have they done? All oh, right, okay, I will do that, you know. Uh, and this is it, you know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them as a lesson for Bani Israel to come. They saw this, they're gonna be telling this you know, story. We hear about it, everyone, you know, uh, hears about it. And there's a lesson in there. Look, you have a particular behavior pattern in a particular situation. This is the outcome. And oh, look, there was so and so as well. Particular, look at Karun, particular behavior pattern, particular outcome. Uh, you know, you look at Ad, particular behavior pattern with a particular outcome. So nothing's changing, right? And you know, whoever has these qualities, whoever has these behavior patterns, um, that's what's going to happen to them, right? So this is, you know, it's, it's as simple as that. There are lessons in, in this, you know. So let's look at, at this ayah, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَجَاوَزْنَا بِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ الْبَحَرُ فَأَتْبَعَهُمْ فِرْعَوْنُ وَجُنُودُهُ بَغْيًا وَعَدْوًا Right, <clears throat> we brought the children of Israel across the sea. Uh, then Fir'aun and his soldiers pursued them unjustly and oppressively. حتى إذا أدركه الغرق قال آمنت أنه لا إله إلا الذي آمنت به بنو إسرائيل وأنا من المسلمين. and uh, but as Pharaoh was drowning, he cried out, I believe that there is no god except that in he whom the children of Israel believe, and I am now one of those who submit. let's look at this. وجاوزنا ببني إسرائيل البحر. so Allah said we took بني إسرائيل across you know, this, this body of water. And so he's saying, we did this, the royal we, it's a tremendous act. You just, you know, can you imagine it, you know, this, all this huge water, you know, splitting, the ground is completely dry, all the water's gone to the side, and a clear route, a path has been made for them, they were the prophet. He struck the staff, this happened, go, Allah's with you, you're being protected, go through. So, um, so he he takes them to the other side, right? And Allah is protecting Bani Israel. Allah is protecting Sayyidina Musa and Harun, alayhim wa salatu wa salam. And then what does he say? Uh, this one. Um, فَأَتْبَعَهُمْ فِرْعَوْنِ وَجُنُودُهُ So, and then Allah made, uh, sorry, um, Yeah. Uh, so, the, so, so then what you had is you have Fir'aun and 
you know, um, his army is following them, right? Thinking they got through, we'll get through. Here's where they were seeing red and they were, you know, when they were, you know, the, the midbrain, it was had taken over. When the, when the, in the front, the front part of your brain, which, which makes your rational decisions in times of extreme emotion, like anger and these things, it can say, switch off and it's your midbrain that takes over and all they were saying, we need to kill them, we need to get them. So that took over and they were in there, they weren't seeing, you know, they, you know, they chose not to see any signs. So then, you know, Allah made made them go into this water. And then what, what happened? Why did they do that? Baghyan out of rebellion and, you know, just crossing limits, right? And Adwan, you know, just, just breaking all the rules that they could. Uh, anything just to destroy these people. Anything just to get to them, right? We don't care about right or wrong anymore. It's not even about the principle of, you know, they were our slaves and they ran away from us. We just want to get them. Okay, so what happened? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Hatta idha adrakahul gharaq. So it's not clearly stated that the water split, but it is, you know, elsewhere. And so it's understood that the, the water came crashing down. And you can really understand this, like, you know, if you ever jumped into a swimming pool or something, you know, and when you make contact with the water, you know, if you if you're not if you don't go in uh, in a streamlined way, um, the impact with with the water can hurt, you know, um, and you know. You know. <clears throat> so, what happens is the waves come down, and you know depending on how much water there is, it's just like a, a tremendous amount of force that they come down with. And they could, you know, it could snap a person's neck. It, it, it would, at the very least, you know, we have hurt tremendously. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it happen in a way where they, they were killed. You know, this whole army was just all killed. And the water, you know, imagine the force of that coming down and then them being so overtaken by it that they can't swim, they can't get away, and they just completely drowned and killed. Right, that's what happened, and so uh, you know, as they're drowning, it says Hatta ida adrakahul gharaq that this is this happening. You know, they're struggling, and you know, and he says right at the moment when the drowning got to Pharaoh, right, he said this. He said this statement. Whether he he, he said it out loud, or he was like coming up in the water, or in he was able to say it. Allah knows best, but this is what he expressed. And he said, Amantu annahu la ilaha illa bi, illa ladhi amanat bihi banu Israel. I believe that there is no God except for the, the one who Bani Israel um, believe in. And I'm one of the Muslims. I'm one of the, the ones who submit to him. Right? And so it's, it's interesting, you know, he doesn't say, he knows the name of, in the Lord of Musa and the Lord of Bani Israel, Allah, right? He knows that name, but does he use it? No, right? It's almost like he can't, you know, he still can't admit it that, you know, does, but he's doing it to save his life, right? And, and then he says that I believe in the Lord of Bani Israel, the one who, the, the God who Bani Israel believe in. So it's like, almost like, no, look, they've been saved, right? And he just rescued them. I'm drowning, I'll say, and I believe in the same God, and maybe I'll be saved as well. Wrong. And so when, when does, um, so now the, 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 point, the point we have to clarify, which is Tawbah at death <clears throat> is accepted up to a point. So the angels take your soul out from your feet, work their way up, and then when it gets to your throat, there's a point called the point of a gargara, right? Usually where a person, if they're lying, you know, in bed and they're dying. When the soul gets to a point, they see, uh, you know, they, they, they can see, um, you know, uh, at, the, at this point, um, Tawbah is not accepted, right? But before that it is. Why? Because at this point, usually around this point, uh, people are shown, uh, uh, you know, they see the angels that are coming. To, coming and they, um, they see their place in paradise or hell. Right, they're not able to express what they're seeing, but you know they, they, they are. I I I mentioned the story for you. I think I think a little while ago. I I had a friend. I have a friend. He was a doctor in in a hospital, 
and there's some old lady and she's an atheist and um <clears throat> you know she's 80 or, or something she's really old been in the hospital for a while and he wanted to speak to her try to get her maybe to accept god and she's very confident and no you know i don't believe in all that and you know i don't really want to believe in all that kind of thing so what happened is she's lying there and um a little while later that he's there next to her and she starts dying right and he said she she he told me he said she grabbed my hand with an incredible amount of strength she was squeezing it right and she's saying help me help me right is it the death itself? He said, honestly, right? These are the tricks of the trade, as they say, right? But, you know, many times, many times when people pass away in the hospital, um, <clears throat> if they're conscious, if they're going to be conscious, you know, the the doctors will, will give them, you know, some drugs to, to make them drowsy or sleepy because, you know, um, you know, death is, you know, it's, you know, for, for many people, you know, like when, when they pass away, it's you know it's too disturbing the way it happens you know so if the family members are around they, they'll give them some drugs to calm them it's because of things like this and he said he said once that once this muslim man came in elderly muslim man you can tell the person of worship and he spent his life in worship and so he got diagnosed with some illness and you know he only had a, you know, a very short while to live i think he died the same day or something and he said, the, the man found out, and he was like, Alhamdulillah. And, you know, he, he, they sat him down on a chair, and I think a few hours later, he just passed away in peace, right? And so this is, and we know from the narrations where, you know, Sayyidina Ibrahim uh, asked to see the angel of death in the form uh, he takes, when he takes the soul of a good person, and the form he takes when he takes the soul of a bad person. So, like, there's, you know, there's all of these things. And so... You know, it's not pleasant. So at this point, the veil is lifted and the person sees. And when you get to this point, it's no longer belief in the unseen because it's now right there in front of you, right? And Allah, what does it say? Alladhina yu'minuna bil ghaib. Allah wants faith based on something which is unseen, not baseless because there's a solid foundation of proof. And signs and miracles. That's what the Quran keeps focusing on. These right, there's a solid foundation of faith. It's not a blind faith, and it's not like you know, faith and reason are you know, opposites, polar opposites. Rather, faith and reason, you know, go hand in hand, right? Because reason leads you to faith, right? So, so at this point, so when he's seen everything and he's seeing. You know all of this that's when he's like i believe in the god of the bani israel and you know uh, you know as they say too little too late and that's what it was too little too late you know just this mere this mere claim at the point of death what you know what's this worth right nothing so and he said i'm one of the muslims i submit and i surrender hang on when you had all those opportunities and all the signs and all the miracles and all the, you know, the nine, you know, signs that came to you and you didn't care at all. But now when your precious little you know, life is in jeopardy and, you, you know, you're, you're certain that you're going to die now, you want to be rescued. Now you want to have faith so you can be rescued. And that's exactly what I said to him. Right. Uh, so that why was a mistake. Apologies. So it's al ana. This is a mud. What is it? Mud lazim. Kalimi mukhaffaf. In Tajweed, this al ana is stretched to six. Al ana wa qad asaita wa kunta wa qad asaita qablu wa kunta min al mufsidin. He was told. So either it's either he's told, either an angel said this, or it's uh, what it seems to me is it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commenting on this, right? And so he, he, maybe an angel did say this to him, but it's, it seems like a comment. Both are valid interpretations. So uh, now uh, you believe, but you uh, but you always disobeyed. I'm one of the corruptors. Very powerful. Today we will preserve your corpse so that you may become an example 
for those who come after you and surely most people are heedless of our examples so here when you recite this in tajweed you know, there's a mud uh, in the narration of hafsan asim anyway so it's al ana right oh you can be short in this word right but uh, al anyway <laughs> let's not go into tajweed um so so i mean if you were to express this in english it would be now now you're believing now you choose to believe it's a, it's a rhetorical question now like where were you before where was this iman of yours before and look what the arabic says Al-ana wa qad qablu wa kunta min al now when you were disobey you were disobedient qablu so qabl here has this meaning of for a long time in the past before this for a long time you were disobedient now you're choosing to believe and you are firmly of one of the, the corruptors one of the people that caused devastation and corruption and sedition on earth now you're believing what worth is your what worth is your iman have now what good is it now? The time to believe was then. The time to change was then. The, the time to rectify your situation was then. Now you expect redemption? Now you ex expect to be saved? No. It's as simple as that. Right? So, here's the opportunity that, you know, whilst the opportunity is there, make the most of it. But, you know, this is it. This is why all the, you know, professions of remorse and everything in the akhirah it's, it's of no use because the test is in this life right there it's, it's like someone turning up on uh, you know coming to the exam right and just not bringing a pen not bringing anything just you know making a paper airplane out of the <laughs> out of the test paper and then when the results come and you've got a big you there or something. No, no, I'll study, I'll work hard. No, I, I know the answer. Look, this is the question, this is the answer. I, I know. It. What good is it now? Right? That's that's the point. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Falyoma nunajika. So today we will rescue you. We will rescue be we will we'll take your body out, right? We'll preserve your corpse. So uh, meaning. So this, this can be understood in a number of ways. That, um, that the, you know, his, his corpse won't go to the bottom of this lake or sea and it won't be decomposed there. The fish, it won't end up in the belly of, you know, fish. They won't eat him. You know, he the, the, the body will be brought to the shore. And, you know, so say that Musa and Bani Israel left, you know, they left, they've got nothing left here now. So they went on to, uh, towards Palestine. And, but if you, if you look at the historical records, his son actually came uh, with, a, with a, another group, right? I, I remember, I don't, I don't have a source for this myself, but I do remember uh, coming across this uh, in the past. But there, there, there's a plaque, up, you know, somewhere in Egypt that says, um, you know, the slave people tried to run away, but so-and-so, the king, his father, uh, the pharaoh, he went and, you know, he, he destroyed them all. Yeah, of course. <laughs> right? It was just propaganda. But anyway, um, they took his body and they preserved it, um, you know, the mummification process. And he was buried in the Valley of Kings in Egypt. And in 1898, uh, his body was discovered. And now it's, 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 in, it's in the Cairo uh, Museum. Uh, and you can go, and you can go see him. Uh, let us just have a few seconds. Okay, I'm cheating here, but anyway, but that's if you google it, Ramsey is the second, that's his image, might be a bit too bright. Uh, but there's a yeah, there's a computer mock-up of what he might have looked like and uh, so we just look up Ramses R-E-M-S-E-S the -E second and that's him you know so Allah SWT said you know we're gonna save your body rescue your body we royal we tremendous way and even if 
people were part of the process, it doesn't matter. It's one of Allah's signs, you know, just giving them the ability and then preserving it. So, um, so that you are a sign for those after you, right? After you, Bani Israel, you know, they're still alive after him. For them, the people of uh, the people of Egypt, you know, after after him, us historically, the people um, around uh, the time, you know, the, the time of the Prophet and anyone after, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What sign? Well, the first sign is clear. He's not a god. He was a weak, frail human being like the rest of us, right? And he has an all-powerful God that created him, that will recreate him and judge him. The second thing, that Allah is the true God, right? And there is no other God but him, right? So that's the second sign, a very clear sign in this. The third sign, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, was true in his, you know, where he was saying that he's a prophet and, you know, and, and the miracles and everything. So this is for those that were after him, uh, after Fir'aun, especially in his contemporaries, they, they should have seen this, right? that look, he was speaking the truth. Maybe we should change our ways now. For Bani Israel, five, um, for, for Bani Israel, that yes, Allah's with us. If we're with Allah, he'll, he'll look after us. But unfortunately, they didn't learn this lesson. And there's also, you know, a huge you know, sign in of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? The power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to destroy his enemies, right? <clears throat> what other signs are there? That, um, so a few here. Uh, that Allah can, you know, support who He wants and destroy who He wants, right? So if you're on the side of Allah, you'll win. If you're supporting the prophets, you'll win. If you're opposing the prophets, destruction, right? And you know, so here it is: if you're with Allah, you win. If you're against Allah, you lose, right? And it's also a sign that no one, you don't get away with, you know, these wrongdoers. They don't get away with their wrongdoing. Right, look at um, his death, it happened right there whilst Bani Israel were watching. Right, so at that time, they must have feel like, you know, yes, Alhamdulillah, I know we've been vindicated. This person who was torturing us and being so tyrannical towards us for all these years, he's got his just desserts, he's got it. What is he going to do now? He can't do anything. Onwards for your judgment onwards for your punishment and there's a very strong ayat in the quran that you know he's going to lead his people into hell you know you want to be their leader go right and you know and in it is a sign that allah avenges you know the, the, these tyrants right in it is a sign of the truth of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam right his body was buried in the valley of kings right and how did the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if he made this Qur'an up, right, as, you know, people have claimed historically, then how did he know that Fir'aun's body, Fir'aun's body is going to be perfect, you know, preserved, right? And it's, if you, if you, you know, if you go bury someone in, in the ground, right, and depending on the heat uh, of the country and various factors, that body is gone in a very short space of time, right? But Fir'aun's body is very well preserved right and how did the prophet know this you know how how could he have known this without there being a divine source he never went to egypt he didn't go to egypt sallallahu alaihi wasallam let alone the valley of the kings right you know to go into uh, and find that <clears throat> so it's a proof that the quran is also it's a sign that the quran is you know of the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there's many more right you know this is something to reflect on as well and so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ عَنْ آيَاتِنَا لَغَافِلُونَ And many, many, many people truly from humanity are absolutely heedless of our tremendous, amazing, fantastic, powerful signs. Right? So there's a huge, huge windfall for someone that reflects on them. You know, some people just ignore them, right? So we ask Allah's protection. We ask Allah's protection from His anger. We ask Allah's protection from, you know, from displeasing Him, right? Uh, 
So some of the lessons, gratitude for blessings is the means of preserving them. You want to keep your blessings? Say thank you to Allah. Allah is the king of kings. Angering him is dangerous. That should be a capital H. Angering him is dangerous. And it, very much so. And Fir'aun found that and he will find that. Being with the prophets leads to safety. And this can be safety even now. You know, following the, you know, the way of the messengers. We have the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu It only brings good, honestly. And being against them leads to destruction, as they saw to their detriment. And being heedless, uh, or <laughs> being heedless or neglectful of Allah's signs causes to people to err. So being heedless, being unaware, and you don't even look, you know, um, it's like you know they're there, uh, but you just can't be bothered. And this is what is the case with many people. Many people that um, don't believe, they choose not to believe because they just can't be bothered. They have to change their lifestyle. Uh, just, we're all right as we are, right? Or negligent, neglect of them that you know it's from Allah and there's consequences to it, but yet they don't care. So what happens? They end up losing out, losing this one opportunity of life. And faith when death is certain, is not accepted. Keep it. At that moment, is keep it. But what we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to make us people of Iman and Iqan, you know, the highest levels of faith, uh, and to preserve it with a, you know, within us until we meet him, and you know, uh, hoping that he's pleased with us. And then, you know, that's what we ask, ask for. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين. Okay, السلام عليكم بره. Right, Allah bless you all. Um, we'll continue from here, إن شاء الله. وبارك الله فيكم جميعا. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit SeekersGuidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org forward slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.